Hi, I'm Dr. Bardia Anvar from the Skilled Wound Care Surgical Physicians Group. Today I will be going over wound care dressing selection for chronic wounds. There are more than 3,000 types of wound dressings available on the market today. It is really easy to become overwhelmed by all the options to choose for a chronic wound. This can be very frustrating for even some of the highest specialists in the um, wound care field. So today we're going to go over some of the basic wound dressings that we choose in chronic wounds. Wound. So our most common type of dressing that we will usually see, and if you go outside of the United States or if you go in actually many hospitals, we typically will cover wounds with gauze. Um, gauze, I have some right here. Uh, there's many actually different types of uh, gauze. It is universally used in almost all different types of wounds and they can come in woven fibers or fibrils which are they can be tightly packed or compressed and um, usually if you're using gauze you will have to remove it pretty often because uh, it can get contaminated or soiled. Uh, you can you know there is still a heavy usage of wet to dry dressings in many circumstances or wet to wet dressings where the gauze is uh, moistened and put inside of the wound and either a dry gauze or another wet gauze is put on top and this is probably the most common thing that you will see also in cleansing wounds we use a lot of gauze. The next thing that um, we may use is a semi-permeable film um, which I have here and these are usually placed over um, wounds and it's a it's a clear um, it is a clear dressing and these will allow for autolytic debridement for to occur in a wound usually we will we will use these um, in a and you can see here it is um, this is your semi permeable film and usually these are used in your lower stage wounds where you may have a stage two, you may have some uh, intact skin um, or some bruising and um, these are permeable to water vapor, oxygen, and carbon dioxide but they are impermeable to bacteria and water. Um, so these are a good option. Uh, the next thing that we most commonly use are hydrogels and um, this can come in many forms. It may come in liquid, it may come in gauze form. Um, and hydrogels really are there to not only hydrate, but hydrogel will also absorb water within a wound as well for a, for a, a wound that has a lot of drainage in it. So um, you can use hydrogels in a variety of circumstances and they will also allow for some autolytic debridement in wounds that may have some slough or necrosis in them that you want to get them. They don't act that fast in the uh, debridement process, but they will allow for that. Also, um, if you look at some of the other dressings that are on hand, hydrocolloids are occlusive and adhesive wafer dressings which contain colloidal material um, that allow for um, many functions to occur within wound healing. So that is another option uh, within and they also allow for some skin protection. If you look at one of the other more common products that we see is uh, enzymatic debriding agents um, and um, the enzyme is de derived from a uh, Clostridium histolyticum and it is a collagenase and the collagenase will go in and actually eat and dissolve the bonds between the necrotic um, tissue and the, uh, the collagen bonds and the wound and it will basically emulsify and break down all of the dead tissue and you will generally um, see uh, it will look and appear something like this. This is your enzymatic debriding agent and it can be used along with um, other agents in the wound. It can be used by itself and it can be used in concert with surgical debridement. Um, Next we move on to calcium alginates. This is a calcium alginate rope that we have here. Usually this will be stuffed within the wound. And this is a absorbent uh, dressing. Usually you use this when you want to absorb fluid that is coming out of a wound. And um, it works great. Uh, not a lot of side effects with using calcium alginate. Of course, in, in some circumstances you don't want to use it for an extended period of time once the drainage decreases, and you actually want to try to figure out why the wound is having so much drainage and um, 
and you don't want to leave it in the wound and, and sometimes you may have to look for it as the calcium alginate absorbs the fluid, um, sometimes it will become smaller and then you kind of have to search for it in the wound. Um, negative pressure wound therapy is also commonly used um, and this is basically using uh, a suction uh, device along with a sponge where um, you are creating an environment of negative pressure within the wound and this can allow for suction of a lot of the uh, drainage and unwanted wound debris and it also allows for wound healing due to the tension of the suction along the wound edges. So that is another option if there is drainage or um, if there is a clean wound bed um, to facilitate healing. Um, it works, uh, has been shown to be effective in diabetic ulcers as well. Uh, another question we commonly get is about honey dressings. When are these appropriate or applicable? Honey dressings, um, our unique line of uh, uh, dressings that have been developed and uh, we commonly use honey dressings uh, in a variety of wounds. It can, it can be used in a variety of wounds and they work really, really great. Um, they are not enzymatic debriding agents but they also do facilitate an environment for debridement or removal of a dead tissue. So they can sometimes be used where uh, a wound has significant slough or necrosis on it um, honey dressings can come in and they, they also come in a variety of forms. Um, Semi-permeable foams, which is something that we have right here, um, they can come in multiple layers of different kinds of foams and they can have hydrophobic or hydrophilic la layers. They can also be used to, to cushion the wound and absorb a lot of drainage. So foams have a variety of applications in wounds. The next level of um, uh, wound care that we have here is collagen dressings and collagen dressings um, work extremely well as well. Uh, we have used collagen dressings in many cases where the wounds are granulating and the collagen will actually work as a matrix that allow the epithelial cells to come over the wound and lay down the epithelial tissue uh, for the wound to develop uh, skin over it. So collagen is a more advanced dressing. It can be used when the wound does have some uh, necrotic or dead tissue on it and it is also an excellent uh, wound healing tool. Finally, I just want to go over the um, balsam peru castor oil trypsin agents that we commonly use. Uh, I call them BCT agents. Sometimes you can have these without the trypsin in them and they can come in a spray or a liquid form. We generally will put these over wounds that have an intact surface such as an eschar, uh, stage one pressure injuries and these basically will slowly allow the wound to heal on its own. They are an excellent um, source uh, for wound healing. This is not the entire gamut of all the uh, wound healing supplies that are out there. Um, there's definitely a lot more. If you'd like to learn more or if you have a specific question about a patient or a wound, uh, feel free to call us. And if you are interested in becoming a wound care specialist with our group, uh, we are always looking for people who are dedicated and committed to providing passionate care to patients. Please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Bardia Anvar.